Okay, this is part three, and we're uh, continuing in verse four of Jeremiah two. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What unrighteousness did your fathers find in me, that they went far from me, and habitually went after emptiness, falseness, and futility, and themselves became fruitless and worthless? Nor did they say, Where is the Lord, who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death and deep darkness, though a land through a land that no man passes through and where no man dwells. And even if we look down into verse, um, let's go down to verse 9. Uh, Therefore I will still contend with you by inflicting further judgments on you, says the Lord, and will, and with your children's children will I contend. And in verse 13, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. They have hewn out themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, which cannot hold no water. Verse 17, Have you not brought this upon yourself by forsaking the Lord your God when he led you in the way? And verse 19, Your own wickedness shall chasten and correct you, and your backslidings and desertion of faith shall reprove you. Know therefore and recognize that this is evil and a bitter thing. First, you have forsaken the Lord your God. Second, you are indifferent to me, and the fear of me is not in you, says the Lord God of Israel. You know, I I don't know about you, but I see that very much in the in the church today, and um, I I see it in my crossing with people, crossing paths with people. When you talk to them, um, it it's just amazing how God is forgotten in the church. I mean, there is a dryness, there is a, um, a lack of life in the body of Christ. And the truth is, it's because, I don't even think a lot, of, a lot of them in the church know that they're lacking this. But it's like we as human beings are so prone to fill voids in our lives with whether it be through TV, whether it be through shopping, with um, buy a new house, keep yourself constantly busy upgrading your house. Um, just so many things, uh, trifle things that keep keep the church from really coming to know who God is in their lives and in their heart and proclaiming who he is in their families. You know, there has to be a uh, repentance in that because she has forgotten her God. And, and that's where I really just see when I read a lot of what's in the Old Testament and how you can apply it to today. I just That's how I see the church today. The church does not know her God. She has forgotten who he is and who he wants to be in their lives. And it is God's heart right now that that controversy that he has, he's pleading with her to come back, to return, to her, to him, and um, and to repent of all the disobedience and the and the idols and the things that she has placed before him. Amen. Okay. So um, let's look at Jeremiah seven for a moment. Now I've used this scripture in one of my other teachings, um, but again the Lord had directed me back here, starting in verse one. It says the word of the the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Stand in the gates, stand in the gate of the Lord's house, and proclaim there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all you of Judah, who enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Verse 4, Trust not in the lying words of the false prophets who maintain that God will protect Jerusalem because his temple is there, saying, This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly and truly execute justice be- between every man and his neighbor, if you do not oppress the, the transient, the alien, the fatherless, and the widow, or shed innocent blood by oppression, and by Judah judical murders in Jerusalem or go after other gods to your own hurt. Then I will cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave of old to your fathers to dwell in forever. So we see that this word is not for the, we're not proclaiming a word to the world, but to the people who enter in through the gates of the house of the Lord. 
this is the word even Jeremiah had back then. It, it is no different today. Many are declaring that um, to the church, to Zion, to the bride, um, to the believers, that she must amend her way. She must turn and walk away from the things that have caused her to err, the things that have held her back from truth. Okay, so let's go to 2 Corinthians 6. Chapter 6, I said, okay, starting in verse 17, that's 15, we'll start in actually. What harmony can there be between Christ and, Be and Bial, the devil, or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? What agreement can there be between a temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, even as God said, I will dwell in them and, and among them, and will walk in them, with them, and among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So come out from among unbelievers, and separate, sever yourselves from them, says the Lord, and touch not any unclean thing. Then I will receive you kindly and treat you with favor, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, and you shall, you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. James 4, 4 says, you are like unfaithful wives having illicit love affairs with the world and breaking your marriage vow to God. Do you not know that being the world's friend is being God's enemy? So whoever chooses to be a friend of the world takes his stand as an enemy of God. Who do you think this word is addressed to? This Bible, as I have said before, is our manual to life. It's not written to the world, it's written to the church. It is, a, it is direction um, on how to live our lives with God, how to live upstanding lives with God, to walk in holiness and purity and to please Him. And within the churches that, that Paul has written to, he was not addressing, when he says unbelievers, these are not the world unsaved people, because if you remember, at least when I got saved, uh, in 1979, I did not know anything about Jesus Christ. I didn't know, I don't recall anybody ever telling me that he died for my sins. My dad was Catholic, my mother was Seventh-day Adventist, and um, I went to church maybe that I remember two or three times, and I don't remember anything about it. All I remember is my dad saying to me, say your prayers at night, and all we ever said was, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Um, we weren't taught to pray to Mary, um, anything like that, which um, to me is not proper either because Jesus Christ is the only mediator between God and man. So we are to pray to Jesus, through Jesus Christ to the Father. But anyway, my point being is that this book, or this holy book was written to the church on how to conduct herself. So within the church, even in uh, Corinthians and the Corinth church, there were unbelievers. There were people who were idol worshippers, pagan believers. So Paul was always instructing the church on how to live right according to the gospel of Jesus Christ, not according to the, the Pharisees or the Sadducees or, or to the pagan worship or the idolatrous worship. And here he was saying, what agreement has the temple of God with idols? So he was, he was instructing the church um, to come out from among that teaching, to come out from among the unbelievers, because that's what they were believing, amen, because it says that, um, where it says in verse 16, I will dwell in them, and among them, and will walk with them, and I will be their God, that is what God is looking for, he is looking for a church that will not have any part with idol worship, and in James 4, he said, we are like unfaithful wives having illicit love affairs with the world. So what is the problem in the church? I'm going to show you. The problem with the church is that she has connected herself with worldly affairs. And the Bible says to come out from among that. We are not to be a part of the world. We are in it, but we are not to partake of it. And we will further this in part three of um, God has a controversy with Zion.